Praise the Lord, my sisters and brothers. I'm your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice. And this is the Prayer Connection, where you make a connection with God. Yes, this is now the Prayer Connection, where you make a connection with heaven. Now, this show is designed to build you up, to strengthen you, and to encourage you to go into another level in your prayer life. Yes, it's designed by God to catapult you and to launch you forward into another level in your prayer life. And we know that it's all done by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise and we give him all the honor. Now, Lord God, we bless you today. Oh, God. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we are rejoicing and being glad in it. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We are rejoicing and being glad in it. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you. We praise your holy name. Father God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be thanked. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy, hallelujah. You are worthy to be adored. You are the worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be lifted up higher and higher, oh God. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy, God. We serve a worthy God, saints. He's worthy of all your praise. He's worthy of all your all of his honor in Jesus name no matter what's going on around you my bible tells me in in God give it in, in all things and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you he says in all things in all things in in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you he didn't say give it, it, he didn't say give God thanks for all things. The Bible said doesn't say give God thanks for all things. But my Bible tells me give and in all things. So no matter what I'm going through, God, you might didn't orchestrate it. The negative situation, the negative circumstances, you didn't do it. You're not the author of it. You didn't cause it, God. You didn't cause my calamity. You didn't cause the sickness. You didn't cause the disease. You didn't cause the negativity. You didn't cause it, God. It's, you didn't do it. It's not you're not the author of it. But when I'm in it, I can give you thanks in it because you are with us. Thank you, God. You're the God that's with us with us in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you father God you didn't cause the calamity you didn't cause the devastation you didn't cause it God you're not the author of it but while I'm in it oh God I will still give you praise while I'm in it I will still give you glory God because you said in your word hallelujah Romans 8:28. That you work all things together for our good. For those who are called according to his purpose. It was good that I was afflicted. That I might learn your statutes, oh God. So God is telling us today. He, God, is not the author of your sickness. God is not the author of your disease. He's not the author of your, of your lack. He's not the author of it. He didn't do it. God's a good God. He's not, he, he, don't blame him. Don't blame him because you got sick. He's not the author of it. It's the enemy that comes to steal and kill and to destroy. God is a good God. He only can, he's a good God and can only do good. So he says, he wants us to know he didn't cause it. But while you're in it, give him thanks. I believe if he find a grateful people, a, God, a people that will give him thanks, we'll come out of it quicker. He says, enter into my gates with thanksgiving and into my course with praise. We got to drill this in us right now. You got to know God is not the author of death. He's the author of life. I'm taking up for God this morning. <laughs> He's not the author of sickness. He's the author of healing. He's not the author of, of poverty. He's the author of prosperity. Who's the author of all, all the other stuff that's negative? It's the enemy. Your enemy, my enemy, Satan. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
But God is telling us today, you might be in a negative situation, but in that situation, if you can find a way to give God some praise and some thanksgiving and lift them up and praise him, he said he will come in the midst of the fire and deliver you. He has delivered, he will deliver, and he will yet deliver. We serve a delivering God. Hallelujah. We give him the praise. In all things give thanks. Not for all things, but in it give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He's looking for an attitude of gratitude. And your knight in shining armor is on his way to deliver you, to set you free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there will be liberty. He will deliver you out of your prison cell. He will deliver you out of your jail cell. He will deliver you out of poverty. He will deliver you out of depression, oppression, sadness, sorrow, and grief. He will deliver you out of the negativity. He will deliver you out of the darkness. He will deliver you out of the sickness. He will deliver you. He, we serve a delivering God. He has delivered. He is delivering. And he will yet deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. We give God praise today. In all things, we give him thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Well, saints, we got some good, good scriptures today. Good things. Talking Today, we're going to talk about hedges. The Bible says in Ezekiel 22.30. Ezekiel 22.30 in the King James Version. It says, I saw four men among them that should make up the hedge. And stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. He said, I saw for a man or a woman, a boy or girl. I saw for a man among them that should make, stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Make up the hedge, stand in the gap. Make up the hedge, stand in the gap. Make up the hedge and stand in the gap. What does, what, what does it mean to make up the hedge and stand in the gap? First of all, in biblical days, a hedge was considered a wall. In ancient days, in ancient days, they had walls around the city. Big stone, big stone, strong walls was all around the city to protect them, to keep the enemy out, keep the, the adversary out, to keep the foreign invaders out, to keep the, to keep all that out. Stone walls. But sometimes in that stone wall, because of the war, there could be a hole in the wall, a gap in the wall. That's why the Bible says, stand in the gap, make up the hedge. The hedge is the stone wall. But if there's a hole in the wall or a gap in the wall or a breach in the wall, the enemy can get through to destroy so in the olden days, in the ancient times, the biblical times, when there was a hole in the wall or a breach in the wall or an entry in the wall or an opening in the wall, the people themselves, they put themselves in that hole. They put themselves in that gap. They stood right in the entryway and they, they, and they said, come, come on, come for it, devil. Because I'm, I'm be standing here, enemy, and you can't get through. Cause we could be our human barricades. We are human shields. You can't get through the hole. You can't get through the breach in the wall. You can't get in, get in the gap in the wall. Because we're going to stand right here. And that's how they fought. That's where the term we you hear all the time stand in the gap, make up the hedge. So that's so what do we do here in 2022? We also, as intercessors, prayer warriors, prophetic intercessors, watching on the wall, we stand in the gap and make up the hedge. When there's an opening in our wall, because there's a spiritual wall around all of us, there's a spiritual hedge around all of us, there's a spiritual fence around all of us. But for whatever reason, when that hole comes or that entryway comes, and usually it's called by sin, sin causes a gap in the wall. Sin causes an entryway in the wall, a wall of our protection. Sin and unconfessed sins. But if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So sin causes a hedge that has to be broken down. Sin causes a hole in the wall of protection, a breach in the wall of protection, 
an opening in the wall of protection, an entryway in the wall of protection. But as soon as we ask God to forgive us of our sins and he cleanses us and washes us and purges us, that causes the opening, that hedge, the, the gap in the hedge. The opening in the head, the entry in the head to be built back up. Because we are repair, repairers of the breach. The forgiveness of God, the cleanness of our hands as intercessors, causes those hedges to be closed. So we want to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for our country, our families, our friends, our loved ones. We want to be the ones that stand in the gap. And make up the hedge. So that wall of protection around your family, your loved ones, your country, your world. As intercessors, if we keep our hands clean. He said, if my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll hear from heaven. I forgive their sin. I heal the land. And then he says, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive. To the prayer that is made into this place. He says my people. So what he's asking us the intercessors. My people. See he said that we had wicked ways. The scripture says in 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name. If they help my name. My people called by my name. He said if my people who are called by my name. He wasn't talking to the world in 2 Chronicles 7 14. He said my people who are called by my name. He wants us to humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways. Not to say, I repent, I'm sorry, I repent, I'm sorry. No, no, no. True repentance, biblical repentance means you, you're sorry for your sins and you turn from your sins. You don't keep doing it over and over and over. I'm not talking about when you need to be delivered in the area. I'm talking about if you truly repented, the grace of God will help you. Not to continue in that forever. It's sooner or later it's going to be a deliverance. Sooner or later you're going to get free from that. Free from that repetitive sin. Or whatever it is. Because we serve a God that delivers. Like we, like we talk, talked about at the beginning of the broadcast. He's a deliverer. He has delivered. He will deliver. And he will yet deliver. But as long as we stay under the spout. Of the spout stay under the spout where the blood is flowing. And, and keep ourselves clean. Keep our hands clean. We can be clean enough. To handle intercession. He's looking for a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He said he's looking for a woman to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He's looking for a boy or girl that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He's looking for a family that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He's looking for a church that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He's looking for a people that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. That the United States of America, this whole world, you, it, it was a hedge at one point, but the hedge is down. The hedge is down, so we see calamity. We see death. We see all kinds of devastations because they, because there's a whole, there's, the hedge is down. But as intercessors, in spite of what the world is doing, in spite of, we can repent for ourselves and repent for the nation. Repent for our country. Repent for our family members that they haven't repented. Repent for the government that haven't repented. We can stand there. We can intercede, interpose. We can intervene on the behalf of others. That's what intercede means to do, to, to, to intervene or interpose on behalf of others. Intercede means to intervene or to interpose on the behalf of others. In Jesus' name. So, Father God, that's what we want to do. We want to be watchmen. We want to be intercessors. We want to be prophetic intercessors. We want to be those that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. We want to intervene and interpose for others. So, we're going to keep ourselves clean by staying in a repentant state, asking God to forgive us of our sin. We'd be like David. He said David was a man after God's own heart. Not because he was perfect. Not because he was all that in the bag of chips. He was a repentant man. He knew how to repent. So God said that's a man after my own heart. And God would say the same thing about you if you if you stay in a place of repentance. When you, when you sense that you have sinned you say God forgive me. And there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 
That's how you stay clean before God. Stay in a mindful state of the out. I want to be clean. And if God points out something that you've done that's wrong, that's a sinful, you repent quickly and get back on track. That's all it means. It don't mean be super perfect or super spiritual. It that mean you you just have live a life that you know what God. I just want to be right. I want to be in right standing with you. If my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. And I'll heal the land. Then my eyes should be open. My ears attend to the prayer that is made into this place. Thank you, Jesus. If we look over in um, Numbers chapter 16, 17. Numbers chapter 16, 47 to 48, it says, talking about Aaron, Mo Moses, you know, you remember Moses and Aaron in the Old Testament? They are familiar, familiar characters. When there was a plague in the land and devastation in the land, Moses told Aaron to go get a censer, run through the land. And Aaron in Numbers chapter 16, 47 to 48 says, and he stood between the living and the dead. And the plague stopped. Oh my God. Number 16, verse 47 and 48, NIV version. Aaron. And he stood between the he stood between the living and the dead. And the plague stopped. What's the plague? Bible calls it plagues, pestilence. We call it pandemic. It's all the same thing. Plagues, pestilence, pandemics. It's all, all the same thing. And Aaron stood between the living and the dead. And the plague stopped. The plague stopped. When he interceded, he interposed, he intervened in prayer. He stood between the living and the dead. The Bible said the plague stopped. The pestilence stopped. Or the pandemic stopped. Oh, yes, he did. In the NASB Bible, it said he stood between the living and the dead. And the plague was brought to a halt. The plague was brought to a halt. Remember, plagues, pestilences, pestilence, pandemic is all the same thing. Different words, same thing. He stood between the living and the dead and the plague was brought to a halt. In the Amplified Version, it says, And Aaron stood between the living and the dead and the plague was brought to an end. Do you mean to tell me that a man, just one man, Aaron, well, he interceded and intervened and interposed on behalf of the children of Israel because they was in sin. That the plague was brought to a halt. That the plague stopped. The plague brought to an end. But the Bible says that. Let that sink in. The Bible says that. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Something to pray about. He stood, stood between the living and the dead and the plague stopped. He stood between the living and the dead and the plague was brought to an end. He stood between the living and the dead and it ceased. Okay now, saints. Okay now, intercessors, prayer warriors, watchmen on the wall. Come on. Bible says in Ezekiel 30, 13, 5. Now this is the sad part. It says God was talking to those that interceded. I'm putting it into 2022 vernacular. He said, you have not gone up into the gaps. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel. To stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. You have not gone up into the gaps. Neither made up the hedge. NIV. You have not gone up into the breaches in the wall to repair it. You have not gone up into the bridges and the wall to repair it. Mm -mm -mm. 
the NLT version says, you have not, you have done nothing to repair the bricks in the wall around the nation. They have done nothing to repair the breaks in the wall around the nation. Remember, there's a hedge around a family, a nation, a people, a community, a home. But he says, you have not done nothing to repair the breaks in the wall around the nation. You have not gone up into the breaches in the wall to repair it. You have not gone up into the gap, neither made up the hedge. Mm, mm, mm. Now Aaron stood between the living and the dead. He stood in the gap, made up the head, and the plague stopped. It halted. It stopped. We got to fortify ourselves in these last days to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. We want to be those that stand in the gap and make up the hedge and don't give up. You keep praying and praying and praying. Ah, oh, it's you. Keep, it's praying time, not fainting time. You keep praying for your nation, your community, your family, your church. Oh, you pray in this pandemic. You pray in the plague. You pray in the pestilence, and don't give up. You got to be more persistent to the enemy's resistance. He might be resisting your prayer, but you don't give up. You press in and you press on. You pray without ceasing. You pray and don't stop. You pray and don't throw in the towel. You pray and don't give in. You stand between the living and the dead. And the Bible says you keep doing it nonstop. Don't give up. Don't take back. Don't lay down. You keep pressing in that the plague will come to a start. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We are the people whom you have called to stand in the gap. And and make up the hedge in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we're going to intercede. We're going to intervene. We're going to interpose on the behalf of our nation, on behalf of our world, on behalf of our family, on behalf of our community. We're going to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. We're going to stand, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Between the living and the dead. And the Bible said the plague will stop. The plague will come to a halt. The plague will come to an end. The pandemic will stop. We're going to stand around right there we will shall not be moved and if we stand right there when the dust clear we'll still be standing when the cloud dark clouds roll over we'll still be standing at the end of the day we'll still be standing at the end of the trial at the end of the tribulation at the end at the end of the devastation at the end we'll still be standing with our answer we speak to the we speak to the plague. We speak to the pestilence. We speak to the virus, the spirit of the virus, the spirit of Omicron, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of Delta, the spirit of Corona, the spirit of the virus. We speak to it and we say you are annihilated, disintegrated, obliterated, disintegrated, eradicated, dis they eliminated and blown to smithereens right off the earth rim. My Bible tells me to speak to mountains and be thou removed. If I can speak to mountains, I can speak to a virus. I can speak to a plague. I can speak to a pestilence. I can speak to it. We can speak to it in the name of Jesus. As intercessors in the name of Jesus. I just believe that. I'm foolish enough to believe what the Bible says. That they stood in that that they stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was stopped. Stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was brought to a halt. They stood in they stood in they stood between the living and the dead, and the plague was brought to an end. We're gonna stand right there. We should not be moved. We are steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that the, that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I believe it's already happening, saints. I think prayer did it. I know what they said, the trends and all that. Okay, that's good. But I know, biblically we know, prayer moves mountains. Prayer does it, saints. Your prayer, don't your labor is not in vain. Your prayer has not been in vain. He heard you the first day you prayed, like he told Daniel and Daniel. You, he, you heard, he heard you the first day you prayed. Your prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Jesus already predicted that there will be pestilence in diverse places or plagues or pandemic. He already prophesied it. He said it will come and it, it has come. But as an intercessor, we can intercede, intervene, and interpose. 
We can stand the gap and make up the hedge. The hedge that was broken down around our world. We can stand in the gap and make up the hedge. And we can fight through prayer. We can stand between the living and the dead and watch this thing come to a halt. Because it will come to a halt. I believe it. He said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. If you don't doubt, I be, I'm, I'm just a believer. I'm a, I'm a believing believer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believing believer. Are you a believing believer? Are you, a, are you an intercessor? Are you a prayer warrior? Do you pray? Are you standing in the gap and making up the hedge for your nation, for your family, for your community, for this world? If you stand right there in that gap, keep your hands clean as an intercessor so you, so, you, so you will be qualified to stand in the gap. If you do that and don't give up, be more persistent to the enemy's resistance, you're going to see the fruit of your labors. I watched the news just recently. And they said that many, like the numbers are coming down, the trend that the, that the, that the pandemic is going in the right direction. Is it hat chance? Is it luck? I think somebody prayed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, woman, boy or girl avails much. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you and we praise your holy name. Thank you for the anointing to pray. Thank you for giving us the anointing to intercede. Thank you for giving us the anointing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Thank you for the anointing to stand between the living and the dead and watch this plague come to a halt. Watch the pandemic come to an end. Watch it, watch it, watch it be stopped. Watch it. Like the Bible says in number 1647. We give you praise for that. And we give you glory for that. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you cannot be an intercessor. You cannot be a one that intervenes, interposes, or, or, or intercedes because you, you don't have a relationship with Christ. But, but if you come to Jesus today, God will give you a special gift. And it's a gift to talk to him and to pray. Prayer is effectual. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man evades much. You have no power without God. You are hopeless without God. You are, you are, you have nothing without God. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. The Pope needs Jesus. The president needs Jesus. We all need Jesus. Come to Jesus just as you are. Repeat after me. If you want Jesus as your personal Savior, lift up your hands. Let's pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Your word says that if I call upon the name of the Lord, I will be saved. I call upon your name today. Jesus, save my soul. You said if I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved with my mouth. I just confessed it. And with my heart, I believe it. Now, you pray that simple prayer. You are a born-again believer. You are a born-again believer. You are born again. You are a child of the Most High God. Read your word. Talk to God in prayer and ask God to lead you to a good church that you would grow with other believers. And then, most of all, that like we learned today, he will teach you how to pray. And prayer is all the prayer is anyway. It's talking to God, communication with God, a conversation with God. And then you too will be able to intercede, stand in the gap, and make up the hedge for the nation, your family, your friends, your life. Because you will be able, by the anointing of God, to operate in the prayers, the effectual prayers, that avail much. In Jesus' name. I'll see you next time on the Prayer Connection. Where we make a connection with God. I'll see you next time on the prayer connection where we make a connection with heaven.